Hi, my name is Duncan Birch. I'm technical director at Lumia Studios based in London. We are a small animation company um, who work on a variety of different styles of animation, uh, one of them being uh, fluid simulations uh, using Next Limits RealFlow, which is what I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about. And we also use their renderer Maxwell renderer uh, alongside these fluids. Um, just sort of tell you a little bit about our company to begin with. Um, we've been going seven years now, and as I said, we're fairly small, based in Soho, London. Um, you can see here on our site we do a wide range of work, um, fluids, which is what I talk about, motion graphics, visual effects, character-based work, many, many different styles. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to talk about a few projects and our workflow that we use RealFlow and Maxwell with. Um, so I'll just show you a few projects to begin with. Unfortunately, a few things we're working on at the moment we can't show you. So some of these projects are from last year and the beginning of this year. So the first one is this uh, whale tail project that we teamed up with, time-based arts. Uh, the way we work with uh, RealFlow is different on many projects. Sometimes we will do all the fluid simulations ourselves and then take it through to rendering and shading and lighting and comping, which is completely fine. Other times we will um, simulate the particles and they will get sent off to another company because it fits into their pipeline, um, they've already got a 3D setup, or other times we will do the particle simulation and the rendering, and that may get sent off to another compositing house. Not because it's something we can't do, but some projects are, are partnerships, if you like. So for instance, this project, um, we time-based arts come to us looking for just the particles because they were then going to treat them and render themselves and comp it. Um, so I'll just play this video for you now. So they had obviously filmed, done the whale animation. We then took their, their geometry, we exported it from Soft Image into RealFlow. We then created various different particle simulations for obviously the drops coming off the tail. And as you can see here, all the, the millions of different drops coming off, the tail interacting with the water surface. Now for this, this project, it's, it didn't really work, not that it didn't work, the, the technique we used was many different simulations, like some of them would be a, a big amount of particles coming off the tail, others would be um, let me just rewind. A few small little drops coming off the tail, and the reason we split simulations up into multiple parts um, is so when it comes to render and especially comping, you can easily select different layers. Um, so you can have the tail drips being a bit brighter, or the, the main bulk being a bit more see-through. Um, it just allows a lot more control. Um, another job, so uh, crown. This is a job we did for, uh, probably last summer. This was, I won't play this full, time, uh, full screen, sorry, because it probably won't be able to capture on the recorder I'm using. Um, we worked with uh, Partizan, who are again a Soho based company here in London. Um, the difference about this project is we did all the, the real flow fluids, but we also uh, meshed and did the rendering, and the renderer we used was, of course, Next Limits uh, Maxwell Renderer. It was great to use both products together, um, just because Maxwell makes lighting and shading, it's just has that extra level of quality, which is, you know, there's, there's different ranges of quality you can get in all renderers, but Maxwell's just so brilliant from sort of, as soon as you load your particles in, you can press a render literally straight away and you get a, a decent look. There's no worrying about um, anti-aliasing, bounce light, final gather, photons, caustics, all this sort of stuff. It, it's, 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 you think a bit more like you're a photographer, or you think, you know, how, how do you want it to look like in the real world? And that's the kind of approach you take. Um, and that, one of the great things about uh, using Maxwell in this is we could render at very low quality, which I'll try and show an example of in a minute, very low quality, which would be very grainy and it can progressively get uh, clean up the image. So you can, instead of waiting an hour per frame or whatever it may be, and then no one can see anything, and then Compa can't do any work, you can render low quality on every frame on your render farm. Your compositor can start comping straight away. If you get the thumbs up from everyone and uh, your 
you know, your um, director says yes, he likes that, you can then render the, all the job again. But the good thing is, you don't need to start rendering again like you would say in Mentor or other renders. You can resume the render from where you left off. Or if unfortunately there's a crash or you have to stop an animation because another job kicks in, you just pause and continue where you left off. It's absolutely perfect. Um, another great thing about this project, um, I'll try and show you in Soft Image in a minute, is say for this frame here there's lots of colours. Now as this is a paint commercial, colours is very important. So our director Sean, um, he sat down with me and chose the colours with me. And the great thing about Maxwell was, instead of having to say, I'm going to change that blue to a darker blue or to pink or brown or whatever, you didn't have to change it and then sort of press re-render and say, right, come back in five minutes for all the light to bounce around and all, all the image to clean up. As soon as you change the colour in your colour slider, the render kicks in straight away with a new colour. It's pretty much almost instant, which is great for a director or a client sat next to you because pretty much real time. Um, so you can get sign-off on approvals very, very quickly, which leaves you more time to be creative instead of all the faffing around getting you know, everyone to approve it. You can do it there and then. Um, right, so quickly, Strongbow, this was a... So again, a slightly different setup how we use RealFlow here. Again, RealFlow for the fluid simulations, Maxwell render for this job for the rendering. Um, this was a collaboration with Windmill Lane in Ireland. They, they had this job, they were the directors, they were the production company, and they needed some uh, fluid simulations, so I'll just play the job for you. So at Lumia here we were, all of this first part was done by Windmill. We then took over and did the fluid explosion in real flow and the rendering in Maxwell. They did then all the compositing and finishing off and editing. Um, so slightly different approach here. We did particle simulations, meshing, rendering, but then the rendering got sent off to back to Windmill for compositing. So we always, you know, every, every job is different how we use the software and how we mix it with other companies. Uh, one of the I'd say challenges for this project was want an exact splash. Now I'm sure we all know that's very tricky. So the technique we did on this job was to split the simulation up into various parts, almost like you would with a Photoshop layer. Whereas, it's kind of hard to so I'm free control over the angles and stuff here. The arrow hitting, we'd do an ex the, the front explosion, if I try and pause it. Front explosion coming off here as one simulation. The rear one as another one. Um, the inside of the bottle rippling upwards, another one. And all the spray is another one, so it's maybe like seven simulations there. Um, we would then, we didn't actually do any meshing on this job, we loaded those particles back into, um, into Soft Image, our 3D program, but we loaded them in with the Maxwell renderer, the render kit. Now what this meant was we could load the particles in and it would mesh them at render time. But the great thing about Maxwell is you could load all these particle sequences, I think like seven of them, into one almost max, uh, mesher node, if you like. So then when it meshed them, it meshed them all as one. So the end product, you wouldn't know there were there was multiple particle sequence, you know, at the beginning of the bottle is just, it's one lump of fluid, if you like. Um, that then, we then could easily apply shaders, just that one Maxwell node, and apply the, you know, the gorgeous lighting that Maxwell does, and render it out, and, you know, off we go. I mean, obviously it wasn't as simple as that because we wanted to get exact splashes, and there was a lot of R&D on this project, but, you know, it, a lot of respect to real flow and Max on this one really made it easy to get a lovely finished product out of it. Um, uh, right, what I'll quickly do, because I'm probably talking for quite a long time, is I'll quickly sort of show you a, a mini project we're doing in real flow to show you a very brief run through. I'll just um, so here in RealFlow what you can do, and this is RealFlow 2013 of course, it's just been released by the next minute guys. So we've got an explosion of fluid here, I'll just show you a preview here. Explosion of fluids, uh, animating fairly slowly, which we ramp up afterwards. Um, which is very quick to simulate, especially in the fact that in RealFlow you can simulate in command line, which makes it a hell of a lot quicker. The guys at RealFlow say 33% quicker, but to be honest, I found it's actually, I swear it's quicker than that. So it's really good that you can now just incorporate straight in here. 
Um, now, as we use Maxwell a hell of a lot with RealFlow, to be honest, RealFlow and Maxwell are kind of, well, they're not the same product, but from our point of view, they kind of are. Like, if you do a fluid simulation, you render it in Maxwell. They just seem to work very well together, and I'm sure as the products mature, the link will be even stronger, and you'll be able to get some great, great looking stuff. But for now, they've got Maxwell Fires, a new feature that's incorporated into RealFlow. Um, which is in most 3D programs as well, but the fact that having it here in uh, RealFlow is brilliant because you can just quickly do a preview, and this is a little bit slower than normal because I'm having to render an actual job in the background. Um, now here what it's doing, it's rendering the particles, so it's done, but the fact is that you can just go and zoom in, and straight away you get the update, which is just absolutely brilliant. So you don't have to load that into 3D, then do a preview. You can just quickly look here and You've got all these new um, new Maxwell nodes here to be able to change, you know, different shaders, um, the size of your particles, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to make it look good. If I'd meshed, and I'm, I'll tell you the reason I'm not meshing here because I've, I've got another technique for doing it. If I'd made a mesh here, is it meshes here, and you rendered it, you would have a you know a 3D polygonized mesh. Um, but the fact that you can just get incredibly quick results and it's just making the workflow so much better. The fact that blue dots look lovely, but the fact you can get a render going with building depth of field, which is just brilliant. Um, so this preview here, which is blue particles, um, if I want to render it in Maxwell like this, or you know, improve the lighting and color, you can send it straight to your farm, and it will split every single frame onto your farm, so you can get it done very quickly. You don't have to do it all on one local machine, which is brilliant. Um, the reason I'm not meshing it here, which is, sometimes we do, I just want to show you another technique. So I'm going to drag over a program here. Um, sorry, I've just moved everything, so I've just lost previews. Right, so we use Soft Image for pretty much all of our 3D work. I've brought in a Maxwell Mesher Render Kit here. Now, same for the crown job. You can load in your bin sequence here, which is you see all the particles in the background. You can add sequences, you can have a massive long list of 10 or whatever all put together and you mesh them all together at once. So here is my Maxwell Fire preview here, which is, kind of, you know, here, uh, here are particles, you can see all the little dots, but it's rendering a mesh. So what it does at render time, it wraps polygons around every single particle and meshes it out like it would normally in real flow. So we've, we've kind of skipped the whole meshing pipeline and done it straight at render time, uh, which can be very good for saving, you know, meshing time, bandwidth, hard drive space, definitely. It all does it at render time. Now, the great thing is here, here's my uh, Maxwell uh, material editor, like in, well, Maxwell, you can have it in real flow, like a basic one of this. But the good thing, like on the crown project, so this is my splash uh, paint and crown, and my director sat next to me and said, oh, that orange we've just found out it needs to be green or something like that. So if we have to re-render it and wait, we can just literally go straight away, instantly change change the shader. And with um, with a direct set next to it, it's brilliant because they love seeing that. You can get real updates off them. You can you know change so many things really quickly. Um, obviously, just skipping through this really quickly, making the, the worst colored thing ever. Um, but it, it just cuts down the, the, the speed, sorry, no, it cuts down the time of being able to just get really nice looking shots done. In other renders, we'd have to spend ages, you know, uh, bouncing light around, getting the shader set up. If it was wrong, you know, you start again, but the fact I can just change the color straight away is just brilliant, you know, so, um, and also same with your render options. At the moment, I'm just using a basic sky shader, but you know, you can change the, the time of day, swing your sun round, or night time is nothing there. You know, you don't have to, it's not left to go right now, I've got to sort of calculate all my render options again and wait five minutes and wait for it. Because as this mesh has been done at render time, I don't need to keep remeshing it every time I press re render, like in other renderers. It's already got that in memory. You know, it's, it's clever enough to know that, and it can just, you can just adjust to your heart's content, um, which is just incredibly helpful and speeds it up so much. Um, as I said, the more, you know, real flow obviously is a fluid simulator, Maxwell is a renderer, but when we work on jobs, we see them as one, like, um, just quickly jump to other jobs we do. We do a lot of these um, 
Listerine jobs, mouthwash jobs. And when we when we create the fluid simulations, um, sorry, let's move that out of the way. When we create all the particles in the fluid state, fluid simulations. I don't really think about how am I going to render, how am I going to do the look or anything like that. It's it's always with mesh with real flow or a, with a real flow render kit, max all shaders, max all lighting, which can either be HDRs or or, or geometry shader, uh, sorry, geometry objects emitting light. It, it's the same kind of workflow, and the fact that now uh, in the new real flow 2013 you've got max all fire built into it, it's just going to it will link those two together much more, and the more we get, you know, better water shaders or fluid shaders, you know, I think these two products are going to be a lot more seamless. Um, and I think, you know, Real Flow 2013, sorry, has got a great future in linking these two together, and Lumia will definitely be using both products a hell of a lot more this year, and obviously moving into the new year with uh, the next year with a lot more, a lot more projects. Um, I've probably been talking for far too long, and I should probably cut it off now. Um, uh, but yeah, we will definitely be using these products a lot more, and especially with the new, sorry, with the new hybrido, it creates large-scale fluids a lot quicker. It's, I mean, from the tests we've been doing, so much quicker than the older version of. Like, if I just, if I just drag this old Listerine product over, project over, this is using the old hybrido, the basic water, and as well as it worked, it was always kind of not, not slow, but not as quick as it should be. It was always a little bit blobby and heavy. We've just been working on a new commercial, which I can't show you at the moment. But the, the base, the base simulation is so much quicker. It, it looks so much more like real, uh, real water with a proper lapping wave and splashing. The energy gets moved around the water so much better than it did in this version. It's just a hell of a lot quicker um, and a lot more stable and a lot more reliable. You know you're going to get a good, good quality. And the, the test we've been doing with a new mesh is incredible and the foam is much better and especially with all the new file formats making the file sizes a lot more smaller which is as we all know terabytes can disappear with these projects um, yeah and Wolfly 2013 is just a great product and Illumia Studios will definitely be using it a lot more throughout the year um, thank you very much for listening and I'll hopefully do another one of these soon thank you very much, cheers, bye